Welcome everyone. Welcome. Welcome to who everyone who's watching online. Thank you for being a part of our online community. Thanks for joining us for our online services. Uh, um, this weekend we are starting a new sermon series, maybe. I'm not sure if it's going to be a series or not. Uh, my cup runneth over, uh, fill it to the brim. So that's that's where we're going this morning. We're going to start with some text. Uh, let's start there. You know, I like to start with text uh, and then introduce our idea and then pray together. So Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a, a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love Psalms 23. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Uh, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Uh, and blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. Uh, so uh, I love the 23rd Psalm, but Psalms 23 isn't actually uh, the inspiration for our message this morning. I started in John chapter 2. Uh, I was studying John chapter 2 for our Bible study that we are having now on Tuesday nights. Uh, uh, and, and as I was reading John chapter 2, I noticed a phrase in there, and it kind of struck me and stuck with me. Uh, and so, of course, John chapter 2 is the wedding at the Cana in Galilee. Um, it's the first recorded miracle of Jesus. Uh, uh, and we're going to read that passage in a minute after we pray. Uh, what you find there is Jesus giving some instructions uh, to some of the servants that were at the wedding, uh, you know, instructing them about the stone water jars, uh, and his instructions to them were, fill them up uh, all the way. Uh, and the servants followed Jesus' instructions. Jesus said to the servants, uh, fill the jars with water, and so they filled them to the brim. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, I'm not sure if it's going to be a sermon series or not. I think that it is. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, you'll know for sure next weekend if I preach part two, then <laughs> it's a series. Uh, here's the basic idea, though, behind, behind what we're talking about this morning. Fill the jars with water so they fill them to the brim. Uh, that's John 2 and 7. Psalms 23 and 5. My cup runneth over. Uh, Matthew 5 and 6, they will be filled. Uh, we serve a, a God of abundance, not a God of lacking. Uh, Ephesians 3 and, and verse 19 and 20, uh, that you might be filled with all of the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. So there's a place where we experience the fullness of God. Uh, there's a place in our communion with him uh, where we are filled and our cup runneth over, runs over the top, right? Uh, and there might be some people that are watching with me this weekend and you haven't ever experienced God that way in your life. Uh, you, you haven't experienced it with your cup running over. Uh, do you want to experience God that way in your life? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, you do. If you don't know the answer to that question, I'm letting you know the answer to that question. You want to experience God so that you experience him in his fullness, in his running over. 
uh, there, there are those that are watching uh, along with me, uh, and you have had seasons. Uh, you felt, uh, uh, you felt it in your life what Jesus was talking about when he said, "Rivers of living water will flow from within them." Right, John seven thirty eight. Uh, we've tasted a little bit of the fullness of God. And it has left us praying for a greater manifestation of Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. We are praying to be filled with all of the fullness of God exceedingly, abundantly. <laughs> I'm using my hands a lot this morning. Uh, above all that we ask or even think. Filled to the all of the fullness, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Uh, that is the place that I want to get to in my life, in my walk with God, in my fellowship with God. Uh, and uh, if that's not what we want from life, uh, uh, we are going to pray that God would change our hearts uh, because uh, we know uh, that that is what we're supposed to want from life. We want to want to God to be glorified more than we want anything else in this life. That's a, right. I, I may not, you know, just being honest, uh, I may not want that, but I, being honest, I want to want that. All right. Uh, uh, and so we're going to pray that God would help to change our hearts uh, so that we do want uh, this abundant uh, uh, exceeding, overflowing, uh, uh, you know, my cup runneth over, fill it to the brim. Uh, uh, you know, I want the Spirit of God just to fill up my life uh, uh, and overflow out of me. Let's pray for that together. Father, I thank you for everyone that is watching online. Uh, either they're somewhere uh, far away, they can't get here on the weekend, or maybe they have circumstances where they uh, that it's dangerous for them to be exposed to, uh, to other people because of a medical condition. Uh, maybe it's their schedule, whatever, for whatever reason. Uh, Lord, I pray for my friends and family uh, that are watching online because if they're watching with me, uh, then they have a heart uh, where the Spirit of God has touched them and they want what God wants uh, and they want for themselves what God wants for them. Uh, and they want to want the things of God, and I'm asking for them, and I'm asking for myself, uh, that by your grace you would give us uh, that desire, that we would want you more than anything, uh, that our cup would run over, that we would be filled to the brim by God's Holy Spirit, uh, so we can glorify the name of Jesus uh, in our lives on the earth, uh, uh, and his name can be magnified above every other name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I am going to post a, a link to a worship service. Uh, pause. Uh, if you haven't spent time worshiping now, pause. Uh, spend time watching that and worshiping. And then come back and listen to the word. I'm also going to post a link to the notes. The full copy of every word uh, that I've got this morning that'll be in the notes uh, uh, at some point if you would like them to have the references for the scripture verses and the points for the you know point one two three four conclusion okay that'll be down in the description point number one fill it to the brim uh, I'm going to date myself how many of you remember brim decaffeinated coffee uh, they stopped selling the brim Brim coffee in 1995 because obviously who wants to drink decaffeinated coffee? No one. Might as well drink tea, right? Uh, but but because of Brim's brilliant marketing slogan, uh, their brand name lives on in our memories. At least in my memory, it does it does because I'm old enough to remember uh, the catchy slogan: "Fill it to the rim with Brim." Uh, and, and I imagine that if Jesus was living with us today, uh, that he'd definitely be a coffee drinker. I don't think he'd drink brim because, again, who wants to drink decaf? Uh, uh, I'd peg Jesus for an iced triple espresso, a splash of heavy cream, and two raw sugars. Uh, probably that would be his drink. Uh, 
Um, I do think Jesus would have given uh, Brim the nod, right? The nod to their marketing team uh, and probably a high five uh, because Jesus liked uh, things uh, being filled to the rim. Uh, Jesus liked filling things up. Uh, he did then and he still does now. He wants to fill things up. He wants to fill us up. Uh, so John chapter 2. Let's read that together and then let's talk about it together. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mom was there uh, and Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. And when the wine was gone, Jesus' mom said to Jesus, they have no more wine. And Jesus said, woman, why do you involve me? Uh, my time hasn't yet come. His mother said to the servants, uh, do whatever he tells you. There's a lot of good sermons in this passage. Uh, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremony and washing. Uh, each of them holding 20 to 30 gallons. Uh, and Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And so they filled them to the brim. Then Jesus told them, now draw some out, take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. And he did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water, they knew what had happened. They knew they draw, drew water and they knew he was drinking wine. Uh, then he called the bridegroom aside and he said, everyone at a wedding brings out the choice wine first and then they bring the cheap wine after everyone's drunk. Uh, but, the, but this guy says to you, uh, or says to him, but you have saved the best until now. Uh, this is the first of the miraculous signs Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. And he revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. So, Let's talk about timing. Uh, fill it to the brim. Let's talk about timing first. Uh, we have a saying, and we say something like this. Uh, we say timing is everything. Uh, God uh, says that differently. God says everything in its time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, verse 1. There's a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, right? A time to, to born, a time to die, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to be empty, and a time to be filled up. Uh, I feel like it's the time to be filled up. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, everything in its time, uh, verses 9, 10, 11. What does the worker gain from his toil? I've seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Uh, and, and this is what we read in, in John chapter 2, uh, verses 3 and 4. The wine was gone. Jesus' mother said to him, they don't have any more wine. Jesus said, dear woman, why are you involving me? My time has not yet come. I, and I find this interesting. His time hadn't come, but still uh, Mary's request got answered anyways. Uh, the Bible says that he has made everything beautiful in its time. Uh, there are seasons in our life uh, when we are waiting for the proper time. The Bible says that. Uh, I know we don't like to hear that. And, and, and I know I don't particularly you know, like it. going with Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. That's the verse that tells us about proper time. Uh, you know, don't become weary in doing good. At the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up uh, but the Bible also explains to us there's a, another thing about God's timing, not proper time. Uh, the King James Version uses the word importunity. Uh, the, the New International Version used to use the word boldness. Now it says shameless audacity. Uh, but, but so we learn from this passage in Luke chapter 11. Uh, yes, in Galatians we find out about proper time. Uh, but in Luke 11 we also discover this other thing about God's timing, importunity or boldness. Uh, Jesus said, suppose you have a friend. It's Luke chapter 11, verses 5, 13. You, you have a friend, you go to him at midnight and you say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Uh, another friend of mine on a journey has come to visit with me and I don't have any food for him. Uh, suppose the one inside of the house uh, 
Uh, he says the insides of, don't bother me. The door's already locked. My kids are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. And, you know, it's the middle of the night. Uh, Jesus says, I tell you, even though he's not going to get up and give them bread because of their friendship, uh, but because of his shameless audacity, because of his boldness, because of his importunity, uh, he will surely get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door is open. Uh, so we have to discern for ourselves which season our life is in. Uh, we may be patiently waiting for the proper time, uh, and the Lord is just waiting for us instead to shamelessly, audaciously, uh, audaciously, uh, boldly uh, come into the throne room of grace and mercy to obtain what we need in our time of need. Uh, I don't know about you, but my patience for his fullness is running low uh, because I don't want to be running low anymore. Um, uh, I want to be running over. I don't want to be running low. Uh, I want to be filled to the brim. My cup runneth over. Uh, maybe we need to stop waiting uh, for it to fall on us from heaven. And maybe we need to reach out uh, and grab it and pull it down from heaven instead. Uh, we're waiting for the proper time when we should be banging on the door and saying, I have a need Give me what I need. I, I, there's something that I want. I want to be full. I want you to fill me. I want to be overflowing. And I know someone might be saying, you're probably thinking, because I, I think this way sometimes. Uh, Mason, I'm not sure if it works that way. I don't know if you can just bang on the door of heaven and tell God, I want it now. I need to be full. I'm empty. I, I want some. Uh, I want what you got for me. I don't know if you're thinking, I don't know if it works that way. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it works that way either, but I know we read the parable uh, and he bangs on the door and he says, give me what I need. Uh, and, and, uh, and Genesis chapter 32. Okay, I, I know this other Bible story about a man who wrestled with the angel of the Lord. A man who needed something, uh, who grabbed hold of someone and who wouldn't let go until he got blessed. And I'm thinking, you know, we're all sitting around in our Galatians chapter 6, waiting for our proper time, uh, and maybe the Holy Spirit is telling us, you just need to come bust down the door. Genesis chapter 32, Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Uh, and there, there's so much interesting stuff in here that I don't have time to get into. Uh, the, the man saw that he couldn't overpower Jacob. How does that work? We're talking about the angel of the Lord is wrestling with Jacob uh, and he sees he can't overpower him somehow. I don't know how that works. So he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and he wrestled with the man. Uh, and, and the man said to Jacob, let me go. It's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. I won't let go of you. I'm banging down the door because there's something I need. I'm on my way to go see my brother, and I think he's mad at me, and I need God's protection on my life. I need God's blessing on my life. I'm not waiting for some proper time. I'm here. I got a hold of you. I'm wrestling with you. I'm not going to let it go until you give me what I need. I need to be blessed by you. And the man says, what's your name? And Jacob says, Jacob, and the man said, you're not going to be called Jacob anymore. Uh, he says, you're going to be called Israel because you wrestled with God uh, and you've overcome. And he blessed him there. Jacob didn't just ask the angel of the Lord, hey, is it the proper time? If it's the proper time, then please bless me. If it's not, uh, you know, just go ahead. Uh, Jacob grabbed the angel of the Lord. He started a wrestling match with him. And he said, I'm not letting you go until I get blessed. 
Yeah, I wonder how many blessings I've missed in my life uh, because I have let God go when really God wanted me to grab a hold of him uh, and not let go of him. If we want to get filled to the brim, to our cup running over, uh, then I think we've got to stop waiting for the proper time and we just need to chase hard after God. Grab a hold of Him in our prayers and in our devotional time and don't let go of Him until He pours out a blessing that we don't have room to receive. Point number two, do whatever He tells you. Do whatever He tells you. Uh, if we want to be filled to the brim and we want our cup running over, then we need to listen to the wise words of Jesus' mom, Mary. Uh, she said, do whatever he tells you. If we're asking Jesus for something, uh, we're saying, Lord, fill me up. Uh, Lord, uh, I want my cup to run over. Uh, you know, uh, fill me to the brim. If we're asking him for something, if we're asking him about something, then we need to get ready because Jesus is going to tell us to do something so we can get to the place uh, we're asking for. Right? His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And, and there were some stone water jars there, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, uh, each holding 20 to 30 gallons of water. And Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And so they filled them to the brim. Listen, if, if we need something from Jesus, uh, like we want to get filled up with him, Jesus might ask us for something in return. Whatever he tells you to do, uh, it may not sound like the answer you're looking for. Mary needed wine for the wedding, and Jesus says, go fill up those jars with water. What, what good's that going to do? And Mary's thinking to herself, I don't need water, I need wine. Uh, but then, uh, in the middle of her doubts, Mary remembers the angel of the Lord appearing to her during her pregnancy. Uh, she remembered the prophecies of, of Simeon and Anna at the temple. She remembered the flight to Egypt. Uh, uh, she remembered her 12-year-old boy sitting in the temple court, answering the questions of the rabbis who were four or five times his age, uh, uh, and she remembered the prophetic word of God to her life. You will conceive and give birth to a son. He will be great and be called son of the most high. Uh, Mary looked at Jesus uh, and she looked at the servants and, and the water jars and she needed wine. And she says, just do whatever he says. It doesn't matter if it makes any sense to us. It doesn't have to make any sense to us because he is in control of everything. Do whatever he says. If you need the Lord to do something in your life and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, but you can't make any sense out of what he's saying, just do whatever he says. Right? You need wine and he says, go get some water. Uh, you need money to pay the temple tax. Uh, and Jesus says, go down to the pond and go fishing. Oh, well, well, I don't need fish. I need money. Jesus knows what he's doing. Right? Uh, uh, you're blind and you want to you wanna see. And Jesus says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And you're thinking to yourself, I've washed my eyes, Lord. I, 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 there's not something in them. Uh, it's not a dirt problem, a, a laundry problem. I, I don't need. Just do what he says. Uh, you're a leper and you want to be clean, cleansed. And Jesus says, go and present yourself to the priest. And you're thinking, I've, I've tried to go to the temple. They won't let me in. I'm unclean. I can't get in. Just do whatever he says. We want to receive a fresh hunger and thirst for the things of God. Do whatever he says. Uh, regardless of whether or not you can make any sense uh, out of how God's instructions to your life could apply to the current situation you're in, right? We're having the one thing going on and God's telling us something else. We can't figure out how the two things are connected. God knows how the two things are connected. God's 
got it all figured out because whatever he says, although it may not be the answer we wanted or we expected, if he says something, uh, then that is the answer we need. That's what we need to do. Number three, our, our conclusion, from, from running out to running over. From running out to running over. They, they, they ran out of wine. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mom was there. Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, they, they ran out. Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. So Mary was friends of these people. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because, you know, she was at their wedding. Uh, you know, uh, I know that Mary was really friends of, of this young couple's family because Mary cared when they ran out of something. I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be nice to have a Mary in our life? Uh, someone that cares enough about us uh, that they know that there's something is that, that something has gone wrong in our life even before we do. Right? That's what Mary, that's where Mary finds herself in the middle of this. They don't know. They're all, they've been having a good time. Uh, but she sees and she's about to do something about it. Uh, they care enough to do something about your problem. Uh, and then they get it fixed before you even know you have a problem. I would like to have someone like Mary in my life. I would love that. I think we would all love to have someone like a Mary in our lives. And so if we'd love to have someone like that, let's try to be someone like that. Mary cared when they ran out. And here is the thing. The Lord cares when you are running out. Uh, running out all the time can get downright discouraging. If you're dealing with an ongoing sickness, it gets hard to keep running out of faith. It, it can get discouraging, can it? Uh, if you're constantly struggling to make ends meet, uh, you know, every two weeks or whenever the paycheck comes, uh, you are just struggling those last uh, couple days and, and the cupboards are empty and you don't know what you're going to eat. It gets hard. Running out of finances at the end of every month can get hard. Uh, if you're battling depression or emotional turmoil, uh, it can be hard to face tomorrow when you're running out of hope. If you feel like you have a run out, uh, you're just about to the point where, where you've got nothing left to give spiritually, emotionally, financially, however, uh, wherever you come to the end of yourself, uh, I want to encourage you with this. All right, the atmosphere of running out, uh, as difficult as it is, is, is the, also the same atmosphere where miracles happen. The atmosphere of running out is the same atmosphere where miracles are manifested. Uh, there, are, there are times that the Lord cannot do the miracle He wants to do uh, until we have a run out of something of our own. Uh, and then, and only then, after we have run out uh, uh, in that state of total dependence on Him, after we have run out of our own answers, after we have run out uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, our own strength, after we've run out of our own money, all of our devices have failed, that's when God says, Aha! Now, right, uh, now that you are all out, now I can do something. I'll give you a Bible example. It's from 1 Kings chapter 17. Uh, it's the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Uh, 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16, something like that. <laughs> uh, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So there's a famine in the land. Uh, Elijah was being taken care of by the brook and the ravens. The brook dried up. Uh, uh, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. He said, go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So Elijah's thinking to himself. He, he receives a, a word of wisdom from God, a revelation. Um, and he's thinking to himself, okay, 
you know, this will work. A, a wealthy widow, uh, her husband's passed on. She's all alone. Uh, he, he left her a big old house. Uh, she probably got a big old storehouse full of grain and wheat uh, and barley and oats. And uh, her cupboards are probably full of, of jams and jellies. And, and her pantry's probably full of uh, fruits and veggies. And her smokehouse is full of dried beef and salted pork. Uh, uh, probably not salted pork, right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and he says, okay, Lord, you know, I can deal with that. I'll, I'll go to the widow's house. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, uh, and so in verse 10, Elijah went to Zarephath. Uh, he came to the town gate and a widow was there gathering sticks. Uh, and he's saying to himself, well, thank you, Lord, for making it so easy. You know, here's the widow already here gathering the sticks, uh, getting ready to go home. I'll go with her. We'll sit down and have a big meal. Uh, and Elijah calls to the widow and asks her, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I can have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he said it to her, And bring me back, please, a piece of bread. And, as, and she says to him, As surely as the Lord your God lives. I don't have any bread. Uh, I only have a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. Uh, she says, I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son. And then we're going to eat it and we're going to die. And, and Elijah says to himself, oh, he says, ah, my mistake, miss. Right. Uh, I was probably confused. Uh, you know, you're obviously the wrong widow. You're not the widow I'm looking for. Uh, he says, go ahead, go off and have your little uh have your pancakes and die. Uh, I thought you were the wealthy widow that God sent me to to take care of me. And, and so Elijah looks to the heavens uh, and he says, Wrong widow, Lord, right? Uh, I need a the other widow, the one with all the food in her house, the one you sent me to to take care of me. Uh, and, and so Elijah and the Lord, they have, you know, quite a little prayer meeting with one another uh, and get all the details worked out. Uh, uh, and, and God speaks to Elijah and tells him about the plan. Uh, and then God has to tell the poor widow lady the plan. Uh, uh, because it's hard to be in that place of running out. But sometimes we have to get to the place of running out before we get to the place of running over. And, and that's where we find the widow. She's running out. Uh, she's about to run over. But she's got to have the faith uh, uh, to, to trust in God in the middle of the running out. Uh, Elijah says to her, don't be afraid. He knew she was afraid. There's a famine in the land. Uh, and she's only got a little handful of flour and, and a few quarter cup of oil. And uh, she's about to make her last meal and then, then die. And he says, don't be afraid. Go home. Do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. And that's hard, right? Uh, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. And the widow went home and she trusted in God. She looked at that little bit that she had and said, you know what? It doesn't even matter. Uh, I'm going to put God first. What good is this going to do me? Even if, you know, I'm going to put God first. And she put God first. Uh, and so she makes a little cake uh, and she's thinking she's going to run out, uh, but she doesn't run out. Uh, she got a little bit more to make a, a few more cakes. Uh, she makes a, more, a few more cakes uh, and she thinks the flour is going to be gone and the oil is going to be gone. But she looks over at the supplies uh, and now there's five times more than when she started. And she doesn't know what's going on, uh, but she just knows she's gone from the place of running out to, to running over. The jar of flour wasn't used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the, the word that the Lord had spoken by Elijah. The Lord did a miracle in the widow's life. But what had to happen first? First, she had to run out. If she wanted to get to running over, she had to get through running out. Uh, the Lord couldn't miraculously provide flour and oil for the widow and her family if they already had all the flour and the oil that they needed. 
Jesus couldn't have miraculously turned water into wine uh, unless they had completely run out of wine first. Whatever it is that we've run out of, uh, what the Lord's saying to us is, don't be afraid. It's only when we come to the end of ourselves uh, that we learn true dependency uh, on God. Running out is a hard place to be, but if you can hold on to your faith, it's a good place to be uh, because it's the place where miracles happen. My God will meet all your needs uh, according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Uh, I will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you won't have room enough for it. Uh, uh, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Uh, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations including ours forever and ever. Amen. I don't believe that the Lord just wants us to scratch out a life uh, uh, from the beginning of our lives to the end of our lives uh, uh, our whole life long. He doesn't just want us scraping and scratching along. Uh, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But he's come that we might have a life uh, and that we might have a life to the full, abundant life. Jesus came to give us life to the full, more abundantly, overflowing with his goodness and richness. Uh, uh, running out uh, should only be a season of our lives, uh, not the story of our lives. Uh, uh, running out should not be accepted as the normal experience. We shouldn't go from day to day and week to week and month to month just running out and running out and running out. It might be a season, but we should, we, it's time to break out of that season. Uh, after we've come to that place of running out, uh, we're supposed to, to walk into that place of running over. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And so they filled them to the brim, all the way full, filled up. When Jesus tells us to do something, uh, even though we might find ourselves in a position of running out at the time, if we'll do whatever he says to the brim, we will end up in a position of running over, overflowing. Uh, I'll give you one more uh, Bible passage. From empty to overflowing. Uh, uh, from... Uh, from oh, too many too many notes sorry um, from empty to overflowing right to uh, Luke chapter five Jesus had finished speaking he he was in the, the fishing boat with Simon Peter and and some of the apostles uh, and and he finishes speaking to him he says Simon put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch uh, and Simon answered Master uh, we worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything but because you say so. I will put down the nets. Uh, and when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish uh, that their nets began to break. Uh, and so they signaled to their partners in the other boat, uh, come and help us. Uh, and they came and they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell uh, at Jesus' knees and he said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. I shouldn't even be in your presence. Uh, and he was astonished at the catch of fish. And, and so were James and John and the sons of De Zebedee, Simon's brothers. And Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. There it is again. Uh, uh, Elijah told the widow, Don't be afraid. Jesus told Simon Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, I'll make you, I'll take you out and we'll catch people together. So they pulled their boats on shore. They left everything and they followed Jesus. Peter went from running out to running over. Uh, he went from empty to overflowing. Uh, they went from empty boats uh, uh, to boats filled so full that they were sinking. Uh, their boats were so full that the boats began to sink. How full are you? How full am I? Not, not as full as I want to be. 
I don't, I don't know about where you are. I'll just be honest. Uh, I'm not as full as I want to be. Don't be afraid. That's what Elijah said to the widow. Don't be afraid. That's what Jesus said to his friend Peter. Don't be afraid. That's what God is saying to us right now in this season. Uh, we come to Jesus uh, only expecting this much. Uh, 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 but Jesus wants us to come to him expecting this much. Uh, like we come to Jesus like Peter, uh, go away from me, Lord. I don't, I don't deserve to be in your presence. I don't deserve to be filled. I don't deserve overflowing. I don't deserve uh, my cup running over. But Jesus says, I'll take you from your fishing boat to, and I will make you a fisher of people. I'll take you in your poverty and I will supply all your needs because he is the one who gives us power to get wealth. Uh, he will take us from our ignorance and he will give us wisdom because it is the foolish things of the world that confound the wise. Uh, he will take us from our ashes of sorrow and heaviness and he will make us rejoice because he comforts all who mourn and provides for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. Uh, our Savior is not the God of the empty boat. Uh, he's not even the God of the full boat. Uh, he is the God of the overflowing boat. Uh, he provides the catch that is so large the nets begin to break. Uh, the boat that's so full that the ship begins to sink. Uh, and He wants our lives to overflow with his blessings. Uh, a, a pot is an earthen vessel that is made for the purpose of being filled up with something. And what does the Bible say about us? The Bible says that we are earthen vessels made from the dust of the earth just like a pot, uh, made by the hands of the potter, just like a pot, uh, formed by the hands of God, and that we were created to be filled with something. We were created to be filled with someone. Uh, God created us so that we could be filled with him by his Holy Spirit, not just a little, but filled up to the brim, our cup running over and pouring out and getting all over the people around us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, thanks for being part of our online family and watching the services. Uh, I just pray that God will bless you and fill you to the brim and that your cup will run over in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.